I think that a, uh, a homeless person in this country uh, could identify what the problems are that we are facing. I think a homeless person in this country could actually point out what the solutions are to the problems that we have in this country, but a homeless person can't run for President of the United States. You have to have a resume to do that. I think I have a resume to do this. And my resume would suggest that not only can I do this job, but I can do a really good job at it. I have been an entrepreneur my entire life. I started a one-man handyman business. I grew it into over a thousand employees. I sold the business in 1999. Nobody lost their job. They're doing better than ever. It allows me to have a full-time unpaid job doing this. I had never been involved in politics prior to running for governor of New Mexico. I went and I introduced myself to the Republican Party two weeks before I announced. John Latuzio, chairman of the Republican Party. He says, wow, I like what you've got to say. I like what you've done. We're an inclusive party. We're going to include you in the whole thing. You know, debates, discussions, you come along, you make your case. But you just need to know that you will never win. That it's not possible to come from completely outside of politics and get elected governor, a Republican governor, in a state that's two to one Democrat. I got elected. I'd like to think it was based on what I had to say, which was just to bring a common sense business approach to state government. Best product, best service, lowest price. Let me make decisions in my life that I should be making, not the government. Less government is better government. I got elected. I may have vetoed more bills as governor of New Mexico than the other 49 governors in the country combined. I vetoed 750 bills. I had thousands of line item vetoes as governor of New Mexico. I took line item veto to a new art form. It made a difference when it came to billions of dollars worth of spending. It made a difference when it came to legislation that, in my opinion, was just going to add time and money to all of our lives. It wasn't going to make us any healthier. It wasn't going to make us any more safe. It was just going to make, like I say, add more burden to the lives that we were living. So I said no. Well, how did that all turn out? In a state that was two to one Democrat, being a penny pincher, talking about less government, talking about keeping government out of the bedroom, I get elected governor, re-elected as governor by a bigger margin the second time than the first time I should have been ridden out on a rail. I think it just speaks volumes to the fact that people really appreciate good stewardship of tax dollars. Three, three things in the, in the course of this presidential cycle. One, they did a poll of all the presidential candidates and their favorabilities in their own states. There's only one presidential candidate in this cycle, and I'm talking about all the presidential candidates who's viewed favorably in his or her own state. It's me. How does that work out in New Mexico? In New Mexico, people wave at me with all five fingers, not just one. <laughs> then they did a study on job creation. Which person running for governor had the best record when it came to job creation? It was me. My response to that was the same as it was when I was governor of New Mexico. I didn't create one single job as governor of New Mexico. The private sector creates jobs, but I created, I created an environment of certainty. I appointed all the boards and commissions. I appointed the heads of all the agencies. I controlled all rules and regulations. And I would suggest to you that rules and regulations got better on a daily basis with just a fundamental basis in common sense. Less time, less money, make it easy to comply with government. And then lastly, and I think this is really important, the ACLU last December came out with a report card on all the presidential candidates and how they do on civil liberties. Now the ACLU, a group dedicated to civil liberties, a group dedicated to the Constitution, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, a group dedicated to civil liberties came out with a report card 
24 Liberty torches was a perfect score. This is important. Mitt Romney, Rick Santorum, zero Liberty torches out of 24. Newt Gingrich, four Liberty torches out of 24. President Obama, 16 Liberty torches out of 24. Ron Paul, 18 Liberty torches out of 24. Gary Johnson, 21 Liberty torches out of 24. I'm going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. Right now, right now I'm on the ballot in 47 states in the District of Columbia. We are litigated in the three states where I'm not on the ballot, and believe me, I should be on the ballot. We should prevail. But although there are other third party candidates, no other third party is going to come close to 50 state ballot access. I believe, and I might be wrong, but I believe the Green Party is going to be on, in, on 30 states. I believe the Constitution Party is going to be on 8 states. Uh, nobody comes close to 50 state ballot access. So when I talk about my opponents, I'm going to talk about Mitt Romney, and I'm going to talk about Barack Obama. There are big differences. And those big differences start with the fact that I am the only candidate that does not want to bomb Iran. ourselves in a two-year bombing maintenance program of Iran. We're going to make another hundred million enemies to this country that we would not otherwise have. The biggest demonstration in the world after 9-11 in support of the United States was in Iran, where over a million demonstrators showed up in support of the United States. And we're going to bomb the citizens of Iran we're going to make another 100 million enemies to this country that wouldn't otherwise exist. I'm the only candidate who wants to get out of Afghanistan now and bring the troops home. Politicians that beat their chests and are going to save us from all the ills of the world, they're going to save us from the terrorist threat, and it comes at a cost of hundreds of thousands of innocents dying in the countries that we are militarily intervening in. It comes at a cost of our men and service women dying, coming back in body bags, coming back with their limbs blown off. Let's stop with the military interventions that have us with hundreds of millions of enemies to this country that we wouldn't have but for those military interventions. I believe in marriage equality. I think that it is a constitutionally guaranteed right on par with civil rights of the 60s and fundamental to serving as President of the United States would be strict adherence to the United States Constitution. I think this is a federal issue where all of us are entitled to inalienable rights, this being one of those rights. I am the only candidate that wants to end the drug war. Let's legalize marijuana now. And we are at a tipping point on this issue. Colorado has it on the ballot in November to regulate marijuana like alcohol. I think it's going to pass. Let's not forget that six years ago, Denver citizens voted to decriminalize marijuana on a campaign based on marijuana being safer than alcohol. I think it's the first of 50 dominoes that will fall. I think when Colorado legalizes marijuana and all of a sudden the plains are filled up with, uh, uh, with Minnesotans uh, headed to Denver for the weekend to chill out, I think everybody's going to catch on to this really quick and it will be a rapid progression to rational drug policy in this country. I am the only candidate that wants to repeal the Patriot Act. How does the veto work? If 
I would have been President of the United States, I would have never signed the Patriot Act in the first place. There would be no Homeland Security. There would be no TSA. I would leave airport security to the airlines, to the airports, states, municipalities. There are big, big differences between myself and my opponents. I am the only candidate that would not have signed the National Defense Authorization Act allowing for arrest and detainment of you and I as U.S. citizens without being charged. I am the only candidate that believes that we need to balance the federal budget now. If we don't balance the federal budget now, we are going to find ourselves in a monetary collapse. What's a monetary collapse? It's when the dollars that we have don't buy a thing because of the accompanying inflation that goes along with borrowing and printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar. So I'm the only candidate that's talking about Right now, Democrats and Republicans are arguing over who's going to spend more money on Medicare. We all recognize that there has to be a process here of mutual sacrifice or we find ourselves with nothing. So they're all arguing about who's going to spend more money on Medicare when we need to have an honest discussion in this country over how we have to slash Medicare spending, or we find ourselves with no health care for those over 65 at all. And that goes for Medicaid also. That goes for military spending. Crony capitalism is alive and well in this country. Both parties have their hands out, they're selling loopholes, individuals, groups, corporations are paying for those loopholes. I am the only candidate advocating eliminating income tax, corporate tax, abolishing the IRS, and replacing all of that with one federal consumption tax. In this case, I am embracing the fair tax. I think it reboots the American economy for the next 100 years. In a zero corporate tax rate environment, if the private sector doesn't create tens of millions of jobs in this country, I don't know what it takes to create tens of millions of jobs in this country. It ends up bleeding out all existing federal tax out of goods and services. So it's really the answer when it comes to our exports. It's the answer to China, making our exports 23% more uh, competitive. It's rebooting the American economy. It's at its heart better. And we can get into a debate and a discussion over the fair tax and what's the best way to implement a national consumption tax, one federal tax, but we can have that debate and that discussion, but it's not happening right now. It's not on the radar screen. I'm the only candidate that would abolish the Federal Reserve if I had legislation in front of me to abolish the Federal Reserve. It's an inside game. Treasury is printing money. The Federal Reserve is loaning that money to the banks at 0%. The banks aren't loaning it out to you or I because they're buying up treasuries in a closed loop. They have to take no risk whatsoever to garner profits that you and I are paying for. How do you get into this? How do you do this? It's what's happening. At a minimum, let's audit the Federal Reserve. Let's shine light on this. You shine light on a room full of cockroaches in a dark room. Everybody scatters. We'll all benefit from seeing that. And then as President of the United States, you know what? That's not legislation to audit the Federal Reserve. That is, a, that is a, an executive order to audit the Federal Reserve. That's the fact that you get to appoint the head of the Federal Reserve. That, 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 would, be a, uh, that would be one of the criteria for getting hired uh, in that position to begin with. So a few words about my opponents. Mitt Romney. Man, I gotta think the guy is smart. I have to. 
Here's what he says regarding building a fence across the border. He says it's a no-brainer to build a fence across the border. You are listening to somebody without one molecule of brain. <laughs> Mitt Romney says that we need to balance the federal budget, but that we need to spend more money on the military and we need to hold Medicare in check. It doesn't add up. We all finished the second grade and there was a mathematics that came along with the second grade. It doesn't add up. And then Barack Obama, I have to tell you, I view that what comes out of his mouth as music. He plays a violin and the words that come out are wonderful. It's just that there's no connection between the words and the reality. He said some really favorable things about gay rights, but he's taken a position on marriage equality that it should be left to the states. Well, 41 states have said marriage is only between a man and a woman. Vote no here in Minnesota. Don't become the 42nd state. But this should be a federal issue. This is a constitutionally guaranteed right. I thought he said incredibly favorable things when it came to our state of perpetual war, our military interventions, and yet we find ourselves in a continued state of war. Let me go out on a limb here. Mitt Romney or Barack Obama are re-elected. We are going to have a heightened police state in this country, regardless of the two. We're going to find ourselves in a continued state of military intervention. We're going to find ourselves with a continued unsustainable debt and spending trajectory that is going to end up in a monetary collapse, if not fixed. And then Barack Obama said some really favorable things regarding the drug war. He said, I will not spend federal resources on cracking down on medical marijuana facilities in states where states, legislatures, or citizens have voted these programs into place and he has flown in the face of that completely by raiding facilities in California and Colorado. This is not acceptable. There is nothing in my resume to suggest that everything that I am talking about here that I am not going to doggedly pursue that I am not going to get up every single morning and take this debate and this discussion in all these categories to the American public because I think we all recognize that we have to embark on a process of mutual sacrifice or we're going to find ourselves with nothing. Today, this morning, MSNBC is reporting about every eight minutes they were reporting Gary Johnson is at 6% of the national vote. Let me ask you a question. For every hundred times that you hear Obama's name, do you hear my name six times? For every hundred times that you hear Romney's name, do you hear my name six times? Look, for every 5,000 times that you hear Barack Obama's name, do you hear my name one time? Maybe. Point here is, this is kind of good news, bad news. When people hear my name, when people see, when, they, when people see that it's being reported at 6%, it draws a lot of attention to the campaign. And that is what's happening now. So I don't want you to think that I'm standing up here thinking this is some sort of protest vote. If there is anything that is, has, is to have been learned over the last year, anything is possible. We had six Republicans go to the top of the heap for a 17-day cycle. Look, one of my big concerns is peaking too early in this whole thing. And based on that 17 days, this, the wave just needs to happen in the middle of October. There's plenty of time, all right? But it does come to all of you. It comes to all of you, and it comes to asking your friends and neighbors and friends and family to just check this guy out. Just check him out. I don't know how many of you have been to the website isidewith.com. I think, I, think it's, I think it's terrific. I mean, you get online, answer 36 questions, they end up pairing you up with the presidential candidate most in line with your views. President Obama right now gets uh, 330 electoral votes. I get 230. Mitt Romney gets zero, according to the 3.4 million people who have taken this survey. And that's where I get back to Obama. If you just match yourself up on the words, I match up with what Obama has to say. The words are magic, but the reality doesn't match the words. 
So I want to thank all of you for allowing me to be here. I want to thank all of you for your activism, and I want to close here with a question. And the question is, what if you all waste your vote and vote for me? I'm the next president of the United States.